Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, we're going to be previewing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers preseason week two matchup versus the Tennessee Titans. If you guys are new here, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button if you do enjoy these types of videos, and let me know your thoughts about this upcoming game in the comments section down below. But let's not waste any further time. Let's get started with the first talking point that I want to give here in this preview for preseason week two Buccaneers versus Titans and that is how will the special teams perform and I've seen you guys uh, commenting this on some of the other game preview-ish type videos throughout this week's worth of videos talking about the special teams unit and how they were not very good on punt coverage and kickoff coverage. The tackling was a little bit poor. They gave up a lot of yards, all these other different types of things. There was also the concern with the uh, fake extra point. There was a two-point conversion and then nobody knew that they had switched it to an extra point. So they got a flag for it. It didn't count. It was an illegal extra point and all this stuff happened right and that has led a lot of people to say hey what the heck's going on with this special teams unit and I will say for the past couple of years it seems like there's been certain aspects of the Buccaneers special teams units that certainly could improve I think that the punting overall has been good I think that the field goal making overall has been good with Ryan Suckham and Bradley Pinion there I think the big thing is the coverage teams. And Ryan Smith in the past, he was a great punt gunner guy, but there was something off last year with punt coverages and kickoff coverages, uh, and it just seemed like things weren't working. And it seems like we're starting to see a little bit more of that going into this preseason as well. So I want to see how they're going to perform because they have a lot of new players in there right now who are trying to carve out special teams roles. Let's see if that helps make a difference because I feel like that is an important aspect of the game is those coverage teams. It's something that a lot of people might not think about. You just think, oh, it's a routine kickoff. It's going to get returned for a handful of yards and then boom, that's where it is and then the drive will start. But no, it can be a big deal. If you get an extra 10 yards, an extra 15 yards, an extra 20 yards, that can be a big difference maker overall in field position, flow of the game, all these different types of things. So it is worth paying attention to, in my opinion, and I want to see improvement from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in regards to that. And I think they do have the players there to show that improvement. There are plenty of guys right now who are battling for special teams positions, and I think that they all can do a very good job. I've seen them do good jobs before in training camp practices. So that's going to be something that not just I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to, but I'm sure a lot of you guys in the uh, comments section and watching this video are going to be paying attention to as well. The next thing I want to talk about here is the first wave of cuts is finished. Obviously, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have whittled their roster down from 90 to 85, and they've also uh, whittled it a little bit down further than that and brought in some new guys to replace some other guys. It's been a whole thing, right? So now we're starting to see these position battles. We're starting to see some of these guys where, okay, if you're on the roster bubble, you've really got to start setting yourself apart now because things are getting a little intense here. Things are growing in terms of overall pressure, I guess, if you will. So who's going to set themselves apart? Who's going to continue to raise the bar to make these final few roster spots that are available? There are still plenty of position battles going on. There are still plenty of competitions going on for some of these roster spots, a lot of which I feel is very important, as I just mentioned. So this is going to be another interesting thing. This second preseason game is going to be a huge, huge chance here for a lot of these backups. I'll explain why in a little bit. And, you know, we, we really do need to see some of these backups really start to show up because, again, I've talked about it before, that first preseason game left a lot to be desired. And guys are running out of time to really show the coaching staff, show the front office what they can do. And uh, they need to start picking up their game if they really want to have a legitimate chance of making this 53-man roster. So that is going to be another thing to pay attention to. I believe the next wave of roster cuts needs to be done by August 24th. Of course, I will be making videos talking about that as well. The third thing that I want to talk about is how will players and position groups who struggled in preseason week one respond in preseason week two? Guys like Ryan Griffin, some of the wide receivers and tight ends who might have struggled, the backup offensive line especially, and then there 
even some guys on defense and special teams who struggled in preseason week one. It might have been jitters. It might have been because the previous season was such a darn mess with the illness and all these other different types of things. A lot of those guys who have been backups and whatnot, they point blank just haven't played football in a while. So that could have been a main reason as to why that happened, why there were so many, you know, struggles in preseason week one. But again, I want to see a rebound. I want to see something along the lines of, okay, yeah, we messed up in preseason week one, but we're going to come back here. We're going to do better than what we did in preseason week one, and we're going to go out there and play uh, some pretty darn competitive football. And of course, we saw competitive football in week one, but there was definitely room to grow. There was room to be better, and I want to see that improvement. I want to see that continuity of growth and um overall a great response from all those guys who struggled in preseason week one in week two that is a big thing that i'm going to be looking for and that ties in as well to guys setting themselves apart because roster bubble type things roster cuts are looming so you've got to have a good response if you don't you very well could be cut from this team point blank that's just saying it how it is so I definitely want to see who is and who isn't going to respond in a positive, big way here in the second preseason game because it's going to give a lot more insight and gleaming into what is going to shape up to be the depth of this roster, the final 53-man roster come time for the regular season. The second to last thing I want to talk about here, guys, which I alluded to it a little bit ago, is how much will Tom Brady and the starters play, if at all? I believe it's pretty much been confirmed that I believe a lot of the starters, in fact, I might say all the starters, are not going to be playing in this preseason game, and that I believe they will play in the third preseason game. Don't quote me on that, but I definitely feel like Bruce Arians had said that somewhere. I'm going to go with the idea that a lot of the starters are probably not going to be playing in this game. In fact, I would, yeah, I'm going to say a lot, if not all the starters are not going to be playing in this game. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of the second string guys in the first quarter, then the third and fourth string guys for the remainder of the game and just roll with it like that, which again, I feel is a good thing. I think this is the best chance for those guys to really showcase what they can do. They did have a lot of that first preseason game, but now you're you're having even more time. So you're, you're getting even more reps. You're getting even more snaps. So yeah, and overall, Tom Brady, the starters, they may not play, but I still feel like this is going to be a very important game to watch. So we'll see how that goes. And finally, guys, the last thing I want to mention here is will some players who have missed time be able to play? We've talked about guys like Robert Hainsey, who's been out for a you know, decent amount of time. I believe Bruce Arians said it was iffy as to whether or not he was going to play in this upcoming game. There have been some other guys who have been dealing with some nagging injuries, Jordan Whitehead, uh, among others. So I'm going to be paying attention to guys who are going in who may have some injuries, who have been, you know, talked about before dealing with some nagging injuries. And I'm also going to be taking a look at guys coming away from this game. Hopefully there's no nagging injuries. Hopefully there's nothing to worry about, but that is something you got to pay attention to. I'm already knocking on wood for that because you don't want to see anybody get hurt. Even if it's backups, you know, you depth is so important. You need to have solid backups and hopefully everybody can come away from this game healthy, you know, growing, playing some good football and showcasing what they can do and uh, everybody making an effort to get that 53 man roster spot at their all respective position group. So overall, guys, that's pretty much all I got here. What do you think about all the points that I talked about? Let me know down in the comments section down below. What are some of the things that you're going to be looking forward to in this upcoming preseason game? Again, give me your thoughts. As always, I will be doing a live stream, baby, tomorrow to uh, go ahead and react to this game with all of you guys. It should be a lot of fun. I'm very, very excited to uh, get that going. Last week's live stream was really, really awesome. We had a lot of people in there. We were all hanging out, watching the game, talking about some Buccaneers football, and it was very enjoyable, and I can't wait to do it again tomorrow. I'm so pumped, and I know a lot of you guys are as well. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, good oh, wait, I, I almost forgot. I almost forgot, guys. Um, don't forget, we also have, uh, myself being a guest at the Cannon Fire Watch Party coming up soon. Rhett and Evan over at the Cannon Fire Podcast are hosting a watch party November 14th, the day before my birthday, which is kind of cool. 
um, over at Barry Haas. And uh, they also have a wing box food truck that is going to be there as well. I will have the video with more information of that down in the comments section down below. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now. And go Bucks.